Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood GM, Giancarlo Herrera here, and today we're bringing you a special episode from our friends over at Dungeons & Dragons. We love that crew, we think their show is absolutely hilarious, and with their third season, which kicked off in January of this year, you have a great spot to hop in on. Not only does it kick off with a rousing musical number, but it's set in a completely new homebrew world with new characters and a new story, so you don't have to worry about getting caught up in their catalog, although we would highly recommend it. And as the Dungeons crew has moved on from the Forgotten Realms into this new world, everything in this town and world is completely improvised by the DM players and their listeners. And again, if you know the Dungeons crew, you know is gonna get dumb in the best way possible. The new season has a very office space meets Robin Hood meets Three Stooges vibe, which I know for a fact, if you are listening to this show, that is your jam. But hey... Don't take my word for it. We're about to play an episode for you. Please enjoy Season 3, Episode 1 of Dungeons & Dragons. And when you're ready to check out more, find them wherever you listen to podcasts or on dumbdragons.com. That's a great website, guys. Wow. (laughs) Okay, enough. Enjoy. Winter's mouth, a divided village, kind of shaped like a big penis. Winter's mouth, full of burnt out people, waking up to say... Hey! Out of the way! You buying this or what? There goes dear Bond when she is the best blacksmith This side of the me mountains A unique skill with finesse The only dwarf that's left In the city of high taxes uh, Good morning, Bonwin! Good morning, Nessa! Where are you off to today? The docks. Fresh shipment of Estrel in. Have an order to finish by the end of the week. That's nice! Harriet! Easy there! Calm down! There's Kevlar and he's in over his head Checking up on city corruption He was sent here from Kingstown Cause the books are all bogged down No, no denying, denying he'll, he'll be gone, gone real soon, soon that Hey you! You there! She stole a baguette Hey you! Stop thief! Somebody help! Where are my eggs? That's too expensive. The town is going to give me an ulcer. Ah, Kavlar in the... Oh, good morning, Bench. What do you have on tap today? At the Brood Awakening? That's where we are, aren't we? The gastropub? The Brood Awakening? Ah, uh, not since yesterday, my friend. Wait, what do you mean? My anops came and shut us down, said we didn't pay our taxes. Ah, uh, it doesn't make any sense. From what I saw in the books, you were all squared up. Uh, I think you could put in a good word for me, you good old pal, Bench. I mean, I mean... Please, Kav. Uh, I'll see what I can do. I can't make any promises, though. Look, there she goes. The thief is robbing my cart. I wonder when the guard will catch her. With her grubby torn up look. And her friends up in that rook. Won't someone stop that crook? How again? They don't quite fit in. Cause I really am a funny girl. A persistent and a funny guy. Can't catch me, I'm a funny guy. Dungeons! And dragons! Fuck it, let's play! (laughs) 
We hear a cluster of footsteps as a group of guards are chasing down an alleyway after you, Aladdin. You've been nimbly moving through the crowd after picking up a baguette from the bakery down the street. Amy, uh, describe for us uh, what Aladdin looks like to, to paint us a picture of this new and exciting character that you have. All right. Well, Aladdin is a young female half elf, and she is pretty skinny and scrawny. She's a street kid. Uh, she's got short red hair, which she's cut herself, so it's patchy. It's patchy, man. Uh, she's got green eyes, pale skin, uh, and is pretty beragged. Beraggled? Beragged? Raggedle. Raggedy Ann. She's a. She's, she's a doll. A scrappy. Yeah. She's a doll. <laughs> she snaps as a sweetheart. <laughs> and she's quick. She is moving along. Um, she knows these back streets and the alleyways like the back of her hand. So, which is where she's got a scar of a bite mark where her best friend Tally uh, bit her when she was younger. And clanging beside her is this, um, it is like, like sand castle bucket type size of a pail that she's got a piece of leather strapped uh, around its handle and she's kind of wearing it like a like a purse <laughs> side satchel and uh, it's what she carries a lot of her things in so she's got the baguette tucked in there and then also up into her little vest uh, to keep it from bouncing around as she is hurtling over garbage cans and um, puddles. You're running down and away. The The sound of the city guards are getting farther and farther. Get her! Oh, get there her! She's not, she's she's not that fast. Come on, get her! She's not that fast. Uh, you're looking over your shoulder just to make sure that you've, in fact, lost them before tucking down another alleyway that's going to lead you back home uh, when, as you round this corner, you thud th straight into the chest of a city guard who is very familiar to you. You thud straight into the chest of Sergeant Dace. And you look up and you see the gold gleaming armor in front of you and he is scowling down and reaches for the baguette. I'm so fast. Make so... Oh, I you, yeah, you gotta roll for this. This is a game. You okay. can't just say. All right, all right. I'm gonna use computer dice. Will this roll set the tone for the entire season? Who knows? Oh, oh this my is God. the first roll. <laughs> and it's first on the roll, computer. First roll, oh, I don't first like it. Roll. Do you want dice, dice? Yes, give me dice, dice. Uh, here is a set dice, of dice, dice. dice. Do, 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 do. Tom made this so high stakes. I, I know. Yeah. You. Bitch. Are we gonna break the streak? <laughs> You only get your first roll once, so that's right. That's right. True. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm rolling for like a real good dodge, okay? Like a swipe and like a whoo, like a okay. So jumping give, back a little bit. I feel like that's uh, acrobatics. That's acrobatics. a dexterity kind of vibe. Yeah. He's reaching for the baguette, and you're trying to to back up. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, you guys. No pressure. I'm Drum so roll, nervous. Please. This is all Tom's fault. You got this. You totally got this. Oh. Oh. Well, it's a 14, so that's not that bad. That's a that's totally great. fine that's a roll. Good, that's above like a average top 70% roll. That is my age. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, we didn't say, but oh, yeah, yes. you're, a, you're a kid. I'm a yep. youngin', 14 years young, uh, which is true. That's 14 with your modifier? Yes, yep. it is. Perfect, so 13 plus one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, contested, he's going to try and grab you and does not. So he swipes his big paw down at you. Um, you dodge back and he says, Aladdin, a strike two this week. Who's keeping track? I am. You have nothing better to do than to keep track? Yeah, no, that's all I've got to do is keep track of you. Because every time I turn a corner, someone's screaming, hey, Aladdin's stolen something. Sounds like a real crappy job. Who'd you make mad to get this job? <sighs> he just listen, glares at you. Listen, it's one baguette. I had seen the baker drop it on the ground. He was just going to chuck it out anyway. Uh huh. He just has a grudge against me because that one time I knocked over that sack of flour. He takes a step towards you. I take a step back. Ooh. You've got one more chance. And then you're going in the blocks for a week. All right. One more chance this week, right? It's like a good, like, three shots a week, you know? 
Look, Aladdin, I don't think they're going to give you many more chances to stay out of this. All right, I understand what you're saying. You need to look me in the eye and tell me that you understand. Aladdin scrunches up her face and looks up at him and goes, I get it. I won't get caught next time. And whoop, she zips by him and whoo, parkours down the <laughs> down the alleyway. Uh, is that persuasion or deception that you tried to roll? <laughs> That's sarcasm. <laughs> So deception. <laughs> deception. So roll deception. You can get by him. He's not going to try and stop you. Oh, that's a 16. Guys, I might okay. be mid teens this right. year. This okay. year. This uh, decade. He, uh, the scene we fade out on there is you uh, duck and weave uh, beside Sergeant Dace, and uh, he turns and watches you go and disappear um, and as you round the corner uh, that you're heading down the rest of the city guard all come up behind him and wait where uh, which way did she go <sighs> lost her guys i did it i did roll, roll good one. dice rolls <laughs> <laughs> it's all happening it's happening for me <laughs> <sighs> oh happy days happy days We'll be right back. It's the middle. Hey, friends, it's me, your dungeon master, Russ Moore. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, this is the part in the show where we normally tell you a little bit about us, what we have going on, what you can take advantage of. I mean, join us on Patreon. I mean, I, I, come listen to us first. You can find Dungeons and Dragons anywhere you listen to podcasts or at our website, dumbdragons.com. Dot com. We are a D&D 5th edition actual play podcast. Do we play a lot of D&D? Uh, we, we play more than we roll. So we have, we, we, try and, we try and keep it light on rules. Uh, that fluctuates, obviously, episode to episode and season to season. Uh, the first two seasons are very much more traditional kind of vibe. What am I trying to say here? Season three is a great place to start. You're listening to the uh, to the first episode. You're getting to know the characters with us. We dive deeper into the characters as the season goes on. It's a new story for us, a new world. Uh, our, our listeners are helping us build this world, and it's a whole lot of fun to sit down and improvise with my friends uh, every week. And you can come join us. Once you fall in love with us, which hopefully you do, uh, no pressure, you can go back and listen to season one and season two, which are just a beautiful, wonderful story, uh, and we can't wait to share it with you. So again, uh, we're Dungeons and Dragons. You can find us at dumbdragons.com or just use, use the little keyboard and find Dungeons and Dragons in your podcast app of choice. We're everywhere. All right, we'll get you back to the episode. Thank you again for listening, and we hope to see you over on Dungeons & Dragons. We hear the sound of uh, of the rushing river. The, the river river, that is, named after Colonel River, who fought a famous battle on it, obviously. Oh, yeah. Uh, there is a commemorative plaque, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. Um, but we are in the docks. There are many ships, uh, all with different goods that have been coming up. Uh, and through Vintersmith. Carla, we see Bonwin coming down onto the docks. Uh, she's expecting a shipment. Um, give us a give us a, a description of Bonwin and what, what Bonwin's doing here. Bonwin is a female dwarf. She is a blacksmith and she is dressed as such basically always, so kind of real beat up leather apron. She's kind of cling clanging because she's got some tools in her tool belt and her pockets on that. Just sort of a, a like rough homespun shirt, leather pants. Like it's a dwarf uh, finesse weapon creator PPE that she's kind of always wearing. Love it. Um, she is of course quite short because dwarf. Um, but she is also quite wide. Like she's a big lady curvy but large she has really long dark hair super curly always up in like braids to try and keep it 
uh, out of her way while she's doing her work, but she kind of always has like a little bit of a glow as she works somewhere very hot, rosy cheeks all the time, and that humidity from that forge gets that curly hair, so she's got um, some loose tendrils always kind of uh, escaping. Oh, I was going to say, it just sounds like she'd be a really good hugger. I think she would be a really good hugger. She's strong, too. So it's like a good squeeze. You get a good one. Yeah. Good. I hard, thought that was a soft hug. Yeah, important to I point love that. out that she's yeah. a good yeah. hugger. Yeah. <laughs> love it. And she is quite smiley and knows a lot of people as she's like traveling from the forge to the docks for her uh, special metal shipment that's coming in. You are walking down and you see the merchant who you regularly deal with unloading um, heavy crates from the ship known as the Sturdy Bowman. Well, that's not a ridiculous ship name. <laughs> what podcast are you doing right now? And it doesn't start with a G even. <laughs> and oh my God. Oh, we're starting a new show. <laughs> <laughs> Russ has picked a new letter. I broke it. Yeah, you haven't figured it out if it's an S or a B yet. <laughs> Could be anything. Bitch. It's both. Uh, the ship, the sturdy <laughs> bowman, uh, and the merchant that you're familiar with is uh, Neldor Parik. We got a Nelly and a Neldor and a Nigel. Uh-oh, Uh-oh I an found an the list. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, it's an so N. Vanessa, too. Okay. Now we know. This is, uh, this, is, uh, this is a different name than what I just said. Philvendor Parik. There we go. Uh, not an N. Phil not Vendor? a G. <laughs> e- exactly, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, okay, uh, Phil Vender. He doesn't have a last name. His name is Phil Vender. Uh, uh, you see Phil unloading heavy shipments of uh, of ore and mi- and minerals and everything off of his ship. He doesn't uh, notice you immediately, but the closer you get, he catches your eye, or you catch his eye, um, and he calls over to you and says, Oh, hey, hey, Bonwin, yeah, come on over, come on over. Hey, Phil. Uh, and then goes back to just directing people uh, to different spots on the dock. He says, it's great to see you. Oh, how have you been? Oh, you know, good. How about you? How was the trip? Oh, the pirates really uh, tried oh. to get us on this one. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It seems like you've, you're but still ev- full. Ev- a l- yeah, a little, uh, little worse for wear up on the mast, so we've got to really just do a little fix-up before we go back out, but we managed to, uh, to keep them at bay. I know we had a precious piece of precious cargo here for you. You do have something very precious. I've been waiting so long for this shipment of Estril. This is... I'd, I need it for a really special order, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we, we talked about the price, and you said it was okay. Yes. Um, so... Uh, 80 gold should settle us up. It was a little bit larger than it was before. It's It went up just a little bit. Okay. Well, I mean, that's not the price that we had discussed or agreed upon. I'm aware. I'm aware. Uh, you know, additional um, concerns uh, on, the, on, the, on the shipment. You know, it was, everything was a little bit more difficult. Um, but, you know, what, what did we discuss? It, uh, did we say 50 or did we say 60? We said 60. And okay, I mean, I 60. understand pirate problems, but still, that sort of a uh, um, captain problem—not really a customer. Yeah. Problem. No, yeah. No. Uh, what I'd like, you know, you're a repeat customer. So what I can do, what I can do is, I'll give it to you for the sixty, um, and then maybe, maybe you can, I, I can get something from you at another time. Oh, like n- none, none of this, none of this astral stuff. But like, Phil, I was gonna say, I'll take it for seventy. And I can get you some some iron work oh. to help fix that mast if you want. I understand times oh. are tough for everybody. I'm not trying to, you know. If you can, yeah. If you can help me fix that up, like within, I I don't. They're they're telling me it's going to take two weeks. But if you can help them do it a lot faster than that, then I can like I I'll, I'll give it to you for the sixty. Well, you know I've got Thane in the shop, and they do great like kind of quick and dirty work, but yeah. it'll be super solid. It's yeah, that's you know I want you to keep coming back and keep bringing me this stuff I need, so... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a rough ride getting out to Estrandal. Uh, they really just upped every... 
all the pirates have really just upped their their business in the region. Fucking river pirates, yeah, you, right? You would think with all the the soldiers coming in that this would be getting better, not uh, worse. Weird that. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure what they're doing over there on the other side of the river. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, wish we had somebody to check in on. Like, well, anyway, it's that's not not our problem. We're here. We're safe. No. Here's your shipment, and he points to a couple guys. Uh, you know, they'll even help take it down to the shop for you because it's that's a heavy move. Uh, so they got you there, and anything you can do to help speed up the process to get me back out on the water that'd be amazing. Bane will take care of it. It's, it's no problem. Yeah, we'll we'll get you fixed up. And uh, hey, thanks. I really appreciate it. I I can't count on anyone else to bring this in for me. Oh, thank you, Bondwin. And he hears a big crash up on the ship. He says, what the hell is that? I, I gotta go. I'll see you later. We'll see you later. Phil runs back up on ship. Uh, and you, followed by two of his crewmen, head back out and towards the hot block. And as Phil runs up on the deck, we see over the river and into the noble region of Wintersmith. Um, we follow our friend Kavlarin Goldweave, who's headed back towards the mayor's office to uh, talk about the possible tax issues going on with the city and his friend Bench Ripley, the proprietor of the gastro pub, The Brood Awakening. Now, as you walk up the the grandiose steps uh, towards the mayor's office. Um, Kevlarin walks past a large monument to the current mayor, um, Nigel Knops, uh, which is uh, a gold statue of himself right in the front entryway. Classy. Subtle. Yep. Mm-hmm. You pause for a second, look at it, perhaps shake your head, and then move towards the big, huge double doors of may- this mayor's office. They're big and huge? They're big and huge. Oh my They're god! Big oh and my huge, goodness. Right? Are they also gold? They are all, they have gold inlay. Like, it's not entirely oh. gold. That would just... Oh yeah, it's not Austin. It's not Austin. <laughs> it's just gold inlay. <laughs> Tom, give us a description of Kavlarin as he is uh, entering the mayor's office and where he's going, and perhaps even who he interacts with first once we get there. Okay. Uh, were there stairs? Because if there were, he's a little out of breath. Not like to the point where he's like gasping and, yep. and, and wheezing or anything, but like a little color in the cheeks because yep. he's a bit of a bigger fellow. When I do say uh, grandiose staircase, there are 50 stairs that you have perfect. to walk oh, wow. up to. Oh, yeah. winded, I guess. Yeah. Turns out he is a, a little out of breath yeah. after after climbing those stairs and opening the, the gold inlay door. Uh, Kevlarn used to be pretty athletic. Um, not so much these days. He's filled out quite a bit. There's a little bit of extra weight kicking around. Um, some heft, if you will. He's about five foot eight. Uh, he's got a full beard. He's very blonde, like kind of almost platinum blonde. Uh, has a couple gold bands that are on his right wrist. Oh, and a shield and a mace, both strapped to his back. Uh, which is what all of the clerical workers carry in this world, is a shield and a mace. You never know. Isn't he wearing some fancy pants? Uh, he has some just generic adventuring pants on. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. Yeah. There was early talks of heavy bloomers, but then I think we moved yeah. past those pretty We quickly. dialed that yeah. back a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Uh, in retrospect, it wasn't the best. Uh, he is rocking, uh, what did we decide, like a tunic? Uh, mm-hmm. We... Yeah. Yeah, there was a, a word for there it. was a jerkin, a jerkin with a jerkin. Uh, 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 lost it. Uh, a sleeveless vest, which is a jerkin over a modest doublet. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the basic sleeves. uniform of all the bureaucrats in town. Amazing. Uh, so out of breath, you're walking through the main entryway of the uh, the mayor's office. You're Im- almost immediately greeted, almost like they were waiting for you. Your assistant while you are here, uh, Oak is their name. Uh, they come over in, and they're wearing, um, they are uh, about your size, about you know, kind of that 5'6 to 5'8. Um, uh, slender build. They're wearing a heavy, like, uh, 
like almost corduroy jacket um, that is, uh, it's got a nice double lapel. Uh, they've got uh, a messy black hair, uh, stubble. Also half elf. Also, they are also a half elf. Um, and they come uh, running up to you and say, oh, Kavlarn, it's great to see you in today. Uh, uh, I've got all your paperwork here. And he's got carrying a huge stack ready to go. Uh, and just, uh, you want me to hand it to you here or just take it to your office? I'm, I'm ready to make sure that we are checking all the books. Not overlooking uh, anything. These are the ones that we have to look at today. Yep. Oh, 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 slow down. Slow, okay. slow down. Okay. I'm still, still catching my uh, breath a little oh, bit yeah, after sorry, those stairs. Sorry, sorry. Um... All right, which paperwork? Uh, the the uh, your daily. So we're gonna go to your office and we're gonna look over the uh-huh. paperwork because that's what you're uh-huh. here. You're here to check up on the paperwork, uh, and this yep. is the paperwork that we're allowed to. I mean, that we're supposed to look at today. Okay. Um, speaking of paperwork, yes. Uh, what is going on with bench? What do you, What do you mean? What's going on with bench? Well, I was I was just down at Brood Awakening. Yep. And he's closed for oh. all intents and purposes. Oh. And it kind of sounds like the mayor maybe stripped the name off the business as well. Oh, oh, the mayor wouldn't do that without good reason. Perhaps Bench is just owing on some taxes. You know, that's well, usually what happens when businesses get their uh, licenses revoked is they haven't been paying keeping up. He did say something about taxes, but I was we just went over that paperwork yesterday and everything looked good. That was the paperwork we were supposed to look at yesterday. You are correct. Uh, um, perhaps no, we did look at it. Yeah, yeah, we did. We we were allowed to look at it yesterday, and it looked all good. So uh, you know what? Just uh, let me go talk to Nina. Nina knows everything that's going on about these sorts of things, and then we'll get back to you about potential okay. tax increases that may have stripped Bench of their uh, accommodation. I mean, business. Uh, well, while you're talking to Nina, can you get her to pull? The, the 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 32 forms on the sculpture outside of the mayor i'm just kind of curious what that cost oh that was a gift uh that guaranteed oh well then you you filled out the 17 b's as well then to to mark it as, as a gift Seven, i'm gonna go talk to nina about that uh get the 17 b's and the 32 a's uh on the on the gift and the rick rick uh, rick uh, yeah, i'll be right back She's listing bra sizes at this point. <laughs> She's going to get the 36B. <laughs> I'll get those uh, tw- 29 double Ds. Get those double Ds. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go put these in your office. I'm going to go talk to Nina. I'll meet you back in your office, okay? And he zips off down the hall, uh, leaving you standing uh, just kind of in a moment in the middle of this mayor's office. Uh, or not mayor's office, the front entryway. What do you want to do? I mean, I don't want to go back to like the broom closet that they've got me set up in that has no windows. Um, so maybe I'll I'll take a wander through uh, the mayoral library. Okay. Mm. Okay. We see Kevlarin uh, round through this this entryway, walk past a giant fountain on his way to the mayoral library, where a big, big, large, big, huge, big <laughs> fuck descriptors. We're an enormous. Thank you. Where an enormous <laughs> door awaits him, pushes it open, and sunlight begins streaming through into this grandiose library. Dungeons and Dragons Season 3, Episode 1. And yes, that's the beginning. And we're so excited. This episode starred Amy Moore as Aladdin, Carla Maxted as Bonwin Everpain, Tom Laird as Kavlarin Goldweave, and Russ Moore as your Dungeon Master. Dialogue editing by Carla Maxted and sound design by Russ Moore. This episode featured music from Epidemic Sound and sound effects from Epidemic Sound, Boom Library, and Sound Ideas. And I can't forget about our new art. That's by Matt Garbutt. You can follow him at ArtMonkeyMG in, in the places. We'll put a link in the description as well. A huge thank you to our supporting producers. Gabriel Lynch, Jessica Babiak, Kat Waterflame, Jacob Madden, Christian Brown, Craig Zeiss, Barry Mady, Ongeron Kirsten, 
Old School Gamer D, L.A. Branton, Nathaniel Teeter, Luna, and Aaron. And another thank you to those who gave us names and places and all the great stuff, like today's patrons, Cat Waterflame, who gave us the names Dace, Oak, and Nessa to use in the show, Jonathan Bell, who gave us Bench Ripley, and Twiglets Are Great to Eat, who gave us Thane Bloom, and can't forget French Canadian Will, who gave us The Brood Awakening. Join us today at patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast for so many reasons. Like, I mean, you get to join the community where you get to hang out with all of these amazing people that I've, that I've mentioned and, and us, the cast. I, I guess you could do that too. But your support helps us do more things. I mean, the big goal here is to, like, you know, maybe make this a full-time job where we can just travel around and play games and meet all the cool people that are listening to our show. That would be really awesome. You can join for as little as $5 a month, which gets you access to countless hours of bonus audio. It's like there's another 300 episodes on there of Dungeons Downtime and the exclusive show to Patreon, The Adventures Of, which is a show that we do that has like, I think we're in like season five or six now. It's run by Tom and Amy Carl and I play characters in it. That's how D&D works. Uh, but we have that over there too. And did I mention that we want to do live shows? Yeah, we're going to be doing some digital stuff this year where patrons will get in for free. I've rambled for far too long now. We do bloopers at the end. So after after I'm done talking here, is there be a little funny funny? Sometimes it's a little one. Sometimes it's a big one. You don't know until you listen to find out. There's a link tree down in the description. Join us on Discord. Follow us on Instagram where you can keep up with all the funny things that we're doing and where you can get to know us a little bit more and we can we can get to know you. I've been rambling too long. I'm just excited for the new season to be here, okay? And don't forget to go check out Looters. We mentioned them in the middle. Great show. We're hopefully going to do some guest swapping coming up this, this season. So keep an ear for that. Okay, I'm done talking now. Thanks for listening. You have a great week. And we'll talk again real soon. Where we begin to follow our friend Kavlarin. Now, I wrote down a word... That is either gold wealth or gold wealth. Is it weave? Gold weave, weave. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get it right. I mean, I thought originally about wealth. Yeah. Well, 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 the, yeah. What, what was, what were you trying to say? I don't know. It looked like an LF and I was like, well, well, yeah. wealth. I'm not wealth. the only one who can't read his writing. Yeah. No. no. Uh, and it was it was completely bad legible right up like, until oh, those two cool. letters. <laughs> it's like I'll know this. Goldweed. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Dungeons and Dragons is a Dumb Dragons production. <laughs>